in uh, the new release of Inventor 2016. Just bear in mind it's only uh, a few of the enhancements that we're going to be looking at and there's so many more that they've actually introduced in this new release. Um, I see we've got a couple of people online. Um, if there's any issues with uh, sound or anything like that, you can just add them in on the questions section. And uh, we have someone online who will attend to that for you. All right, so let's get going. That's just a little bit about A2K Technologies. For those of you that don't have any engagement with us, we're um, an Autodesk Platinum partner and the largest channel partner in Australia. Just a brief overview of the breadth and depth of our offering. We offer software, consulting, training, thought leadership, IT services and support on that software and also hardware. That's just a little bit about myself, Linda Campbell, and um, my experience ranges across uh, various IT and CAD areas, mostly CAD support. Right, so let's get going on the customizable Inter Inventor homepage. So this is an improved startup uh, when you open Autodesk Inventor software. You'll be met with this homepage here. And the default layout enables you to create a new file, activate a project file or open a recently used file. You'd actually be forgiven for thinking this is just like any other Get Started page, but let's have a look at how it has been improved. Um, I would compare the new home page to the introduction of the ribbon, although it might be a change to how you do things, I challenge you to give it a try. My home can be set to display um, alternative information, so that's the home view as it opens up. You can go to Team Web. In this instance, I've set um, our company's web page as uh, the link that I, I want in there, but you could have your company's intranet page, or um, if you wanted to, you could go and change that, it's under your options. And over here we've got this new introduction, Team Web, and we can go and change that. And when we go back to Team Web, we're now given this web page where you can download Inventor Parts. So if you had a vendor who kindly supplied Inventor Part or assembly files for the products that they supply, you could link in there and download those for easy access while you're working in Inventor. We've also got uh, the help page, and that opens up nicely for us into, um, just a little bit slow on the, on the webinar, sorry about that. just need to be patient, but it opens up to your typical help pages and um, I just have to go back to the home page and see what's happening there. So with the help pages, work has been done to improve the overall navigation of the help content. Okay, so sorry about that, it's jumped back to the, the home page and um, I'll just go through that with you. So in the new section we've got quick access to our part, drawing, assembly and presentation templates. This little button here, configure default templates, quickly allows you to go in and change the default templates that you want to make use of. These default templates are then listed in there. 
we've got an advanced panel on this side. If you select that, it takes you into those folders that you're used to seeing when you select the, the templates folders. And again, it's a much easier and, and nicer to access um, overview here. So you've got your your inches template files, and then what happens with the panel is it becomes the basic panel, and you've got access to the new part assembly, etc., which are your linked to your default templates. Over here on the right hand side, you've got your projects. And projects are now shown in this panel and can be activated by double clicking. So any of these projects can be activated by double clicking. I've got my What's New in 2016 as my active project. And here on the right hand side, it gives me a little bit of an overview of um, my project, the type, location, and I can click on Workspace and it opens up my workspace for me. All right, then down over here, let's go up to this side here. We're actually able to flip the display there so that you've got your recent documents on the top, new and projects down the bottom. Um, you can maximize recent so that it's just a full page of your recent documents. Reset that back. Also able to drag and resize to suit. So that then minimizes those icons over there again and also on your project side. And again, just quick select on that reset button up the top there. So next to your projects, you've also got um, two other tabs up here, the shortcuts tab. That allows you to add files or folder paths and also shortcuts uh, over here, add link to a URL that you might want to have access to. So nice and easy access to additional folders and um, paths there and also to URLs. With the files details tab, it's to do with the recent list down here. So in the recent list, if you click and select a file, the file details tab gives you information on that file, its location, etc. And then moving down to our recent documents list, let's start off over here so you're able to change the way that those are viewed, tiles, large, small, list, etc. And we've got a nice handy search recent documents list as well that we can put into play. And something that I quite like is this filter on the left hand side. So you can refine uh, the list that's displayed according to your selection criteria here, active project or recent documents, all assemblies, drawings, parts. So you can select according to particular file types as well. Sort by recently opened, date modified, etc. And then date modified, you can change all of those to say, okay, well, I only want to see the files that I worked with in the last week or last day. At the same time, you're also able to pin or unpin these documents from your list. So if I click to pin that one there, it pops up into this pinned area and the remaining unpinned documents just filter through and get populated with uh, more recent documents that you've uh, accessed. Otherwise, at the top, your pinned document remains up there indefinitely until you unpin it. You're also now um, given these opportunities, so you can open with this icon here. You can remove from the list with that one. And then this one, the actions button, is a really nice one. So you get the open with options, open the containing folder, explore the containing folder. That's just so that you can browse through that folder. You don't get the option to open anything. File details, or you can clear the unpinned documents. If I go to open with options, you see 
what that means, it's the view representations, level of detail, etc. Right, so once a file's been opened in Inventor, your uh, my, top, my Home tab appears at the bottom of your graphics list, so even when you go into another file and work in there, you're quite quickly able to go back into the My Home space and access new documents, recent documents, sort through your projects, etc. Okay, we're going to move on from there. And have a look at any CAD technology. So collaboration is essential in today's design environment. We all know about that, but often it can get complicated when we're working with uh, teams in different offices, even different countries that are using different CAD systems. And Autodesk Inventor 216 introduces a new groundbreaking technology called AnyCAD. This minimizes these challenges and it provides an open and connected workflow when non-inventor data is provided to designers. So we've had a little bit of success bringing in uh, our external CAD information, but this is something, uh, just a new technology that completely makes it literally easier and uh, more efficient. So uh, this includes models from most major CAD systems, including CATIA, SOLIDWORKS, NX, and also AutoCAD, um, just to name a few. Importing non-invented data into assemblies is flexible now and provides several options to bring in the right type of information. So let's have a look at that in, um, in practice. Let's close that, go to the inventor, there we go. Right, so what we're going to do here is click on the open button and we're going to go and open a SOLIDWORKS model. Okay, so I'm just going to open that universal joint, click on open, and this is the dialog box that we're presented with. Right, so we've got two options here, a reference model and convert model, and what those both refer to is whether there's going to be a link between the existing file and inventor or not. So with reference model, it means that you're maintaining that link and it enables the inventor file to update when the SOLIDWORKS file updates, for example. We've got the same typical selections as we had previously, your object filters, uh, inventor length units, but this tab here, this is the great one. So we go to load model and look at that. We've got our model that's being brought in, but over here we're actually given the option to deselect or select what we want to bring in. So each of these has been picked up and assessed and realized as a separate part. I'm just going to bring them all in for this exercise, click on OK. So previews of the model make it easy to select exactly what you need to bring in. This again is saving you time and money and eliminating the need to transfer your CAD files, which is typically a very manual and time-consuming process. Uh, once your models are imported into your design, as with all inventor parts and assemblies, the links can be maintained or broken at any time. If we have a look over here at what we've brought in, we've got our third-party node as we're used to seeing, and over here we've got our universal joint. We'll have a look at all the different part files. 
quite easily able to go in and make any changes there uh, to the bracket, for example. At the top level here at the universal joint, we're able to go in and change the edit import. And perhaps we want to just remove that subassembly. So let's go click on that, it puts the little minus sign in there. Okay. And there we go, we've removed that subassembly. The other two options that we've got on that level are the suppress link and break link. So exactly the same as what we're used to seeing with our um, associative files. Right, Inventor will then alert you when changes are made to the source files and the files can be updated immediately. Any changes in the native applications will be reflected right within your Inventor model. What else are we able to do? If we go up to the place component command, we're able to go and um, pick up that sub-assembly, crank sub, click on open, exactly the same as what we've seen before, we'll keep it at reference model, load the model and again the options as to which parts you want to add or remove and we can bring this in and click to place that. What else are we able to do? We're actually able to go and constrain this part. So if we go to our joint relationship builder, we'll use a rotational option and we're going to just move around there, there, back again, let's place it on that centre there, and then let's work out that cap. Add a minus. That looks good. All right, and we've managed to insert that component using our place command, and we've also been able to use typical inventor constraints in that part. All right, we're going to start a new file here, so I'm going to go down to my, mo my home and starting a new part file. I'm just going to use that one there, it's linked to my default. All right, over to the Manage tab. And let's go to import and we're going to import that whole universal joint into our part environment. Again, select and load the model, selecting all of those components and click on the OK button. It's brought that SOLIDWORKS assembly into a part file, but what has it done? Look over here in the browser, solid bodies, it's created each of those parts as an individual solid body. Look at that, the brackets solid one, that yoke male solid two, isn't that fantastic? If we go to our lower level here, bracket, the options that we get in our right click is to use the direct edit for example, and this is where we're able to go and move, size, and you're used to rotate, delete. Scale is a new introduction in your direct edit. So if we click on size, select that face there, we're able to resize those faces. So 
nice and easy manipulation there of a third party software beautifully brought into our inventor environment. All right, once we've got our solid body part created from our SolidWorks, we can actually save this. I'll just save it by the default. Again, in the Manage tab, we're going to the Make Components command, and we'll go and select all of those solids. Again, we'll just keep all of those defaults there. We're putting it into an assembly. But the best part is over here. Okay, solid one, your component name, you'd actually want to go in and rename that. So bracket. Okay, and then over here, we've got yolk mail. Etc. Etc. I won't uh, bother doing that again. You can change your templates, etc. And we'll click on OK to create our new components. Right. What's opened up now is a assembly file created from our multi-body solid part file. And again, here we go. We've got all these separate part files in here. So if we go to, um, let's maybe go to that one there, solid nine. What are we able to do here? We're able to go and open up these parts separately. I'm just going to do something Direct edit, size this face. Okay, save that. Go back to our assembly and it's updated in our assembly. So just acting exactly as we would have our inventor assemblies act. So that's just a fantastic introduction in um, Inventor 2016. I hope you're as excited as I am about that. So AnyCAD empowers designers to produce in multi-CAD environments and at the same time it's minimizing your risks and costs associated with translating large amounts of CAD data. So you can see there's a whole lot of uh, functionality being introduced there. Isn't that great? All right, further on with our AnyCAD technology is our new associativity of a DWG drawings and um, our AutoCAD DWG drawings and enhanced DWG workflows. Autodesk um, Inventor 2016 it's bring, has brought uh, innovative new technology to quickly turn your legacy 2D AutoCAD data into 3D models. Now, uh, I don't loosely uh, use that word quickly. Uh, it's not something that uh, we normally associate with our 2D and 3D models being converted back and forward amongst each other. But we actually can simply import any 2D DWG file into Inventor 2016 as a DWG underlay. And you have an integrated and associative connection between your 2D and 3D data. So let's have a look at uh, that in practice. All right, so going back to the, my home tab. And again, we're going to start a uh, new part. I'm going to use my uh, standard inches template. So that's that one there. Just double click on that and it opens up 
nice and quickly access to those uh, additional template files that we might have. Right, for starters, we're going to save our part file, so just save, and um, we can call this associative DWG. A DWG file cannot be imported into a new unsaved file. You'll get the warning anyway if you do try, and it will allow you to save at that particular point in time. Right, so what have we got here? We've got an import button up here. We're going to go and import our DWG. This one here, YA base. All right, we're asked to select a plane and also an origin point. All right, it lets us know that we're inserting it and that we can use projected geometry for the 2D sketch. Click on OK for that. And then let's have a look at our 3D views. Oh, sorry, our 2D views. Right, so our node in our browser here on the top left hand side shows you that DWG file that's been brought in there. Uh, if you right click on that, again you get those options there for the link, suppress link, break link. Uh, what we're also going to have a look at is this great introduction here, our layer visibility. So you can control your layer visibility to access just that geometry that you need. Obviously, we don't need all of those dimensions, etc. So let's have a look at this. What do we want? We want visible edges, tangent edges, and we also want hidden edges. I've selected those because I've also got this button up here that allows me to invert that selection. The other two options are select all and clear all. Click on OK and I'm left with only that geometry that I want to work with. OK, let's have a look at projecting geometry now. So we need to start a 2D sketch on that same work plane. So let's do that, start 2D sketch and just going to select under my origin tab that XY plane again. So I'm working on exactly the same plane as I've placed my DWG. And over here, under the projected geometry command, we have an addition, project DWG geometry. I can hear you all asking, why didn't they bring that in earlier? <laughs> I have asked the same question. It's, uh, it's great. It really is a good function. So we're left with this mini toolbar for this command. The first option we've got here is project single geometry. So as you can see, if I hover over individual lines, I can project those. My next option is projecting connected geometry. Hover over that, it projects all of that geometry that has been connected to one another. Next option along is to project a DWG block. So you can bring your blocks into Inventor as well and project the 2D geometry there. So I'm just going to project this over and also this. Close that mini toolbar. I'm going to create a um, dimension that I'd like to use for referencing. It is a driven dimension, but I'm going to use that to get my width on my, pl my block here. My so I'll finish that sketched off and right click in my graphics window to change my dimensions display to names so that I can better utilize that dimension there. All right, so straight away I can go into my usual commands here, extrude, and um, I'm going to select that profile there, and I'm going to use D0 as my reference. Isn't that a lovely way just to link everything up? Look at that, beautiful. All right, we want to create those holes. We can do them on the bottom face, top face, but 
what we need to do is, is essentially import another instance of that DWG, this time on this face and using that point over there as my zero comma zero reference. Again, I get that information about the DWG overlay. Now, it's not placed it correctly. That's not a problem. If I go over to that instance that I've just placed, I can right click on it and I can move or, as this command says, translate it. Right, so this is the little toolbar that we get, the locate. Okay, so the locate is the from point. Then back up to snap to and I want it to move to there. Easily moved, no problem. That other um, DWG that we first brought in, we can switch off that one's visibility to provide a bit more clarity there. And what we're going to do now is project geometry of our new sketch that we brought in. So start a 2D sketch on this face. I haven't quite um, lined that up, so let me just line that up properly. Sorry about that. Okay, so again, translate. Locate. And snap to you. That's it, that's better. Okay. Right, so we're going to start a 2D sketch on that same face and project our DWG geometry again. So this time we're projecting single entities. I want to get those filleted edges projected. I also want to get those counterbore holes projected. Okay, at the same time, I'm also going to put in some reference dimensions there so that can pull in some additional information. So dimension that. And that. And also my whole diameter. Right, finish that sketch. And what we're going to do here, first of all, is fillet our part. So let's create a fillet on these edges. Let's see if I can bring this one in here. Yep. And that dimension there, D4, I'm going to use that as my reference for my fillet. How easy was that? All right, and a hole, same thing, we're going to create a concentric hole, change it to counter ball. All right, our plane is here, our concentric reference is this edge there. The counter ball diameter is D5. was that measurement there? I need to just go over here. What is that? D3. There we go. Nice and easy to set up. No calculations, no measuring, no working out. Simply using driven dimensions there. Click on apply and OK. And I've got them created. That hole. Isn't that amazing? All right, so what we want to do now is create the additional holes. And we're simply going to use those from sketch and select those center points there. And it picks up the previous dimensions that we used there, the reference dimensions. Click on OK. And look at that. 
plumber block nicely and easily created from our DWG geometry. All right, so let's also switch off uh, this visibility here. And so since the DWG overlay is associative, we haven't uh, suppressed or broken any links there, so it's still linked in. Any changes that we can make in our original uh, DWG file should automatically be reflected in your Inventum bundle. So this is Autodesk's claim. Let's see if they're right. Uh, let's just make an overall change here. I'll just move that up by one. And um, let's make some changes to these hole diameters. Just go and change them in my properties, make them a 0 0.5. And I'll select the inner diameter as well and change that. Let's make that. Oh, no, I, don't want, I want to change the radius 0 0.25. There we go. Lovely. All right. Save those changes. Let's go back into Inventor. What do we see? We see exactly what we're used to seeing when there's an update made in our parts or assemblies. We're getting that notification in our browser. Also, up here in our quick access button, our local update. Look at that. Click. Right, I'm just going to undo that and show you again. Update. Look at the holes and the top side of the plumber block and they update for us. Isn't that amazing? So this open workflow, it opens up the workflow to engineers, allows them to leverage valuable legacy data. We've all got those AutoCAD 2D drawings uh, that are really have been up until this point very difficult to bring in. And I know that this is only a very, very small little plumber block layout that we've got here, but it really was very easy to bring in. There was no major involvement there, no resizing, remeasuring, no even linking up and closing your loops because that's something we've had a lot of problems with. And um, <clears throat> look at that, we're able to have full associativity as well between our 3D models in Inventor and our AutoCAD drawings. In addition to parts, the DWG underlay technology is also available in the assembly level. Uh, project your DWG geometry between multiple parts in your assembly and create joints and constraints that directly reference that underlay. And then, just like in the part environment as we saw, the assembly environment is also associative, which means your assemblies will update by simply changing your 2D AutoCAD drawing. Okay, we're going to finish off by looking at this uh, great new introduction. It's the multi-body sheet metal design. Autodesk Inventor 2016 brings several sheet metal enhancements that apparently all the clients have been asking for. So to start off, converting non-sheet metal parts has become easier. You no longer need to measure the thickness of a part and manually enter it into the styles. Now the material thickness is detected automatically, simplifying and streamlining the process to convert the non-metal sheet metal components. Any new features or flat patterns you create will now use that as the default material thickness. Another key enhancement revolves around designing sheet metal parts with multi-bodies. So up until now, it's not been a supported function at all. If you've been in a sheet metal part and tried to create a new solid, it simply lets you know it can't be done. <clears throat> This has now enabled faster engineering times for designs of sheet metal parts that are complex. The multi-body part environment is extended to include sheet metal parts. You can now use a top-down 
workflow to create your multi-body sheet metal parts. And this workflow supports many standard sheet metal operations, including uh, flanges, faces, corners, hems, bends, cuts, folds, rips, so everything that you're used to using in sheet metal parts up till now is completely supported in your uh, multi-body environment. Let's have a look at that. This is a multi-body sheet metal part that's already been created just for ease of use in this presentation. If you have a look over here on the browser, yes, it's a sheet metal part. I've just changed those uh, appearances so that we get a distinction between the three. And on in the browser, you can see solid one, two, and three. And each of those contain those various components that we mentioned, face, flange, solid two, it's got a fold, corner round. Just to prove to you that every one of those has been supported in that individual solid. Another introduction in the sheet metal environment. I'll go to flange one and just edit that feature. New introduction is a zero degree bend radius. It wasn't possible before. Click on OK. And look at that. It's calculated it, no problem, no errors. So you've enabling uh, more true to life fabrication methods there. Right, once we've got this situation, you can use the make components or make part command and then open the derived components. So they've put these two commands up here in our sheet metal tab. Right at the end here under the flat pattern, you're now able to make components. So from our three solids, bring them in. And we're just going to change that to an inches template. Accept all the other update uh, defaults. And again, we'd, we'd be wanting to rename those if need be um, to a, a name of significance. And also with your, your templates, you're able to go in and change those. Give it standard inches, click on OK. And you can also link to the sheet metal styles and either or use the color overrides from the source component. Right, straight away we're brought into our assembly file. And um, solid one, two, and three on the left-hand side here, created from our folded model. If you right-click to open any of those solids, you can now go and create a flat pattern from that. That's great, isn't it? Um, there are also several other um, sheet metal enhancements are now available inside Inventor 2016. Unfortunately, with the um, time constraints of this uh, webinar, and you're not able to even do half of them justice but I hope that what I've shown you in your My Home and also in your AnyCAD environment and your Associative DWG environment and then finally in your Sheet Metal. I hope that I've been able to whet your appetite for what's included in 2016. Uh, for more information, you can go to their uh, Autodesk Inventor web page, what's new in Autodesk Inventor, and it just goes through a little bit more information on that. Otherwise, um, we are available at any time to go through any um, additional information for, 
for you and, and help you through those changes. Um, so you may, after this, um, be asked to participate in a customer satisfaction program. So just to let you know that, that Autodesk might be contacting you about this webinar and your interaction with us. And uh, thank you very much for joining me today. If you have any queries, please call us on the 1800 number or you're welcome to email us on solutions at atktechnologies.com.au. Thank you very much for taking the time to attend and uh, have a nice day.